Pass through the ages a long time ago, there comes a dark tale I think you should know. One that does chill, it's truly a fright. You'll not forget this if I do my job right. So get comfy, relax, and go get a snack, cause for this little gem, we'll have to go back. In folklore and legend from public archive, our fair maiden Molly was buried alive. For whatever reason, no one can agree, was it a mistake or just savagery? Some people will argue that she'd fallen ill and seemed dead to the point she was cold and still. The dead were disposed of wherever they caught them, too bad that they didn't give her a post-mortem. Others will say she was part of a ritual by a cult of dark wizards to whom this was habitual. In order to please a great being of old, she was buried alive in the dirt and the cold. All can attest and confirm or aggrieve that the night this all happened was Old Hallow's Eve. Yes, it is true that on this very day, a long time ago, Moll was buried away. But whatever it is about this old night and the forces that work from beyond mortal sight, it and or they had plans of their own, the seeds of this witch a blight they had grown. Once every year, upon this ancient day, a monster will wake to take you away. Patient and clever, Molly's happy to wait for you to come close and then meet your fate. You'll not see her coming, and this I declare, you'll just disappear right out of the air. A terrible ending, such a nasty way to go, what she does to you next, you don't want to know. Needless to say, it doesn't end well, then after this night, she's off back to hell. You will not be seen, no not never again, I wish I could help, but our truce must remain. Though there are some traits you can try to deduce, perhaps now and in future, you might find them of use. Here is a tale that seems best to mention, I'll tell you at once, so pay close attention. There once was a family of quite modest means attending their farm of livestock and greens. A mother and father, a daughter and son, attending their chores, it had to be done. The son was called Will, who was not yet a teen, his sister was older, her name was Francine. While working a field and feeding some sheep, Will was distracted by some earth in a heap. He called to his sister, who paid it no mind, some dirt in a field was hardly a find. But he was intrigued, that little lad Will, and so marched towards that very small hill. Francine gave a smile, and then rolled her eyes, to be so amused by so meager a prize. Will's laughter did carry with joy on the air, when then suddenly, it was no longer there. Silence had fallen. There wasn't a sound. This pricked at Francine, so she turned around. Will was not there. She scanned all beyond and called out to Will, but he wouldn't respond. She searched through the field, each and every part, she looked and she looked, fear grew in her heart. Where is my brother? This thought plagued her mind. Perhaps he went home, and there she would find. She burst through the door, and asked of her folks, had Will returned home, and was all this a hoax? Her heart became heavy, when they gave their reply, that Will wasn't there, and why would they lie? Immediately then, they returned to the field, in which they'd been working, and Will's fate concealed. They asked of their neighbours if they'd seen their boy, but their answers the same, and brought them no joy. For hours they searched, the daylight did burn, so many were looking, but their luck didn't turn. As the sun set, some continued to roam, but Francine and her mother were sent back to home. There they would wait, in case Will came back, he'd follow the light through the cold, lonesome black. 
time passed on by with no sign of the lad. Francine went to the door to wait for her dad. She stood at the frame and felt the cold breeze, when something quite odd her attention did seize. From what little light did shine from her home, not far from their house was a large grassy dome. Had it been there before, she could not recall, a cold twinge of worry did cause her to stall. She took a step forward to go see the lump, but then came a figure which did make her jump. It was her father, coming home empty-handed. They'd not found young Will, so their search they'd expanded. He'd come back to see if Will had returned, and was saddened to find at the truth he had learned. Before he did leave to track Will until found, Francine did inquire about the strange mound. But her father and mother were just as nonplussed. Her father approached it as they further discussed. Francine was concerned, so a warning she state, though unfortunately, it was simply too late. Out from the dirt, like tall withered trees, come two monstrous arms to lash out and seize. The foul wretched skin was the colour of rot, the fingers like lashes, all ten of the lot. Wrapping and grasping fast on to her prey, then dragging him down to the earth right away. In only a moment, he was gone from their sight. Francine and her mother did scream out with fright. They ran back inside and locked up the door, shaken and fearful of what they just saw. They tried to keep quiet, but could not hear a thing, save for their breathing and heartbeats while shaking. The stillness, the quiet, the fear and the doubt reached into their cores and hollowed them out. Was that creature now gone? Or was this all deceit? They then heard some movement from under their feet. The strong, sturdy house did creak and did groan. They knew it was here, but where was unknown. Then crack went the floor, as splinters flew high. Those arms grabbed her mother on her leg and her thigh. With barely a scream and no chance to fight, Mole took the mother a display of her might. In one flash of horror, her mum disappeared. Francine was alone with this monster she feared. Her blood running cold, her mind was so fraught, she knew she'd be next if she was to be caught. Reacting on instinct, she ran for the door. Fighting the lock, she cursed and she swore. It just wouldn't open, for her mum had the key. She fast turned around, and in time just to see, an arm reaching out, which swung like a lash. Francine ducked aside, and then came a crash. The door was now broken, and seeing her chance, she got to her feet, for outside she advanced. The arm reeled back, and then struck out again. It swiped and it grabbed, its attack wouldn't wane. Francine made it out, and beyond of its strafe, she was just out of reach, but still wasn't safe. The arms did submerge, crawled back into the deep, a shift in the dirt, for Francine it did creep. She didn't have long, this much she did know, but just where on earth could she possibly go? Nowhere seemed safe, on foot she would die, but she might have a chance, if she could climb high. She looked to the roof, and felt the ground shake, then scrambled to climb, fast for her life's sake. The feel of the thatch came to her relief, but a sound from below caused this to be brief. She flung herself up, as the arms did attack, Francine still afraid, did quick scurry back. The arms they did swipe, as they came from the breach, but no matter the effort, they just couldn't reach. Francine was elated, but still had her doubt. She'd remain on the roof until one would give out. 
she stayed up all night until the rise of the sun. There then came a moment she knew it was done. A low rumbling did sound from below, and curiously to the edge she did go. From there in the earth she could see the ground shake, and after a moment she noticed a break. A hole in the dirt, she squinted her eyes, where she noticed something that came as surprise. A face could be seen, or at least part of one, it stared for some moments before it was gone. The earth sealed up, and the mass that was there did flatten away, and now was nowhere. And that is just that, my dear lovely friends, one encounter with Molly, and how at times it ends. Well, hopefully now, you'll be safe trick-or-treating. Here's one final warning, in case her you'll be meeting. She's faster than lightning, with no roar of thunder. She'll grab you and drag, right down six feet under. So do watch your step, you'll be safe and sound. Lest you meet the old girl, that mole in the mound. Good day, I'm Jar19 and thank you for listening. So what did you think of Mole in the Mound? Hopefully it will have you being a little more careful where you tread this Halloween. Sometimes the most dangerous things are right under your nose. Just like that spider on your lap, look! Just kidding. Anyway... Old Molly was funnily enough a tough one to write. I actually had a bit of a frustrating time thinking up a Halloween video for you all. Though I suppose this time of year is like the horror family's Christmas, so panic, dread and cursing the world and everyone in it is probably quite normal. Regardless, I think it turned out quite well. Do let me know what you think in the comment section. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did then perhaps subscribe, leave a like, and if you're feeling particularly cheeky, Maybe even a comment. I do hope that you'll join me again. Stay safe. Sleep well. But remember, here we make monsters.